discussing topics related to our theme for this year and also topics that can help us improve our Christian service performance for the glory of God. But this morning, our speaker is a diligent student of the Word. He has been my student before and I can attest to that. Even now, sa kanyang patuloy na ministry, a dedicated servant of God, a very able teacher, I pray teach in our extension class in Pampanga. I can see him, a very great and excellent teacher of the world that would be of him, even now and even in the future. He is our previous regional ministry training center coordinator. He is married to an alumna of Phoebus. Bubbles for him. They were blessed with they are blessed with two children. We praise the Lord for him being our co-worker here at Ibias, being used by God in their church and in various ministries. Let us welcome our speaker, Pastor Jim Paul.
parents natin at tayo bilang mga anak. Uh, for this sermon, we will simply deal with a specific body, namely the body of Christ, the church. Especially since this is DSM chapel service, so ang pinaka-direct application po nito ay ang ating mga Christian services. Tayo na bilang mga tagasunod sa mga tagapakasiwa, tagapangunan ng mga CS na pinagbibilangan natin. Ito po yung direct application. And uh, with that uh, preliminaries, having said all that, we now go to our text. Our text for this morning, na kung saan i-amper natin ang topic na building relationship with your superiors, will come from Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17. From ESV, hear the word of the living God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give and come. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Let us pray. Father, we come before you in the name of your Son. Our Savior, Lord, and our perfect leader. We pray, Lord, that your inspired word would be directly speaking into our hearts. Help us, Lord, to open our minds so that we may be able to comprehend your truth. Enable us, Lord, that with all the things that we are about to hear, may we receptive enough, enough and teachable enough, humble enough to receive it with joy and anticipation of applying it in our daily lives. Teach us, Lord, to become a better follower of those whom you call to lead us and ultimately to follow you. Bless this word and may your name be magnified in our midst. May your body be edified through the preaching of your word in Christ. Amen. So, bago po tayo pumunta sa Hebrews 13, 17, let me, let me just have a quick look to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Uh, ito po yung model play prayer na binigay ni Lord para sa kanyang mga alagad. And this will be the general guideline for not only for the uh, leader-follower dynamics in the church, but in every aspect of our lives, this must be the general guideline for us to live a Christian life in a manner that is glorifying Him. Sabi po sa Matthew 6, 9 to 10, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, binigay ng Panginoon ang model prayer na ito and uh, mas, mas accurate instead na Lord's Prayer ay Disciples' Prayer bilang maging model para sa bawat isa. At ang unang uh, prayer item na binigay ni Lord, Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. The basis of this prayer is our relationship with our Father from being an enemy of Him to be a friend. Mula sa kadiliman, tayo ay hinamo patungo sa kaliwanagan. Sa karamihan sa ating kasalanan, tayo hinamo at dinala sa kadalisayan, sa kabanalan at sa katuwiran. At iyon ay naging posible lamang at naging posible lamang talaga na matawag natin siyang ama ng dahil sa ating Panginoon Yesus. Through His personal work, 
we can call him Abba Father. Even though he is in heaven, that speaks about his immeasurable, uh, immeasurable, immeasurable power. Even though ganoon, ang pagiging father niya ay natuturo sa atin na meron siyang intimate relationship sa atin. He is personal with us. We can call him father anytime. Unworthy as we are. All because of his begotten son, our Savior and Lord. Then, sabi po dito sa modern prayer na ito, Hallowed be your name. That God's name, our Father's name, would be glorified, would be set apart from every other names. At ito po, pag-glorify sa, sa pangalan ng Diyos Ama, ay kalakit din ang ating pagsunod sa ating mga tagapanguna o tagapangasiwa ng simbahan. Our goal is that our Father would be glorified in our obedience and submission to our leaders. And next is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We all know that God's will for us is to become obedient followers and submissive followers. Even though sa mga, uh, even in the, those imperfect leaders na nilagay sa atin ng Panginoon. Ang goal natin is that the kingdom of God will be advanced through our obedience, through our submission, through our support to our leaders. That this will be manifested in and through our lives, in our attitude towards them. And this will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, unworthy as we are and as imperfect as our leaders may be, this must be our general guidelines. God's glory and God's kingdom. With that in mind, with that guideline in mind, we ought to be motivated to be faithful followers and obedient submissive followers of those who lead us. And so we go to Hebrews 13, verse 17. May kita po natin, umpisa pa lang ng verse 17, meron na kuman, obey your leaders and submit to them. Throughout the book of Hebrews, we can see that the anonymous author has labored to present Christ as infinitely worthy of our faith. Since He is better than everyone and everything in all creation combined, Christ is greater than all the angels, He is greater than Moses, greater than the political priesthood, He is the character and mediator of a greater covenant, and whose blood is infinitely greater sacrifice for sins than those of bulls and goats. And in this life, not only are we to put our faith in Christ, but also we are to persevere in Him. So, dalawang bagay po ang trust ng book of Hebrews. Uh, not exclusively, pero primarily, putting our faith in Him. And secondly, preserving in Him, persevering in Him. And one concrete way to make it a reality is to build and strengthen a good, harmonious relationship with those whom God has called us, has called to lead us and guide us and care for us. Magiging reality ang pagsambalatayan natin sa Panginoon at ang pananatili natin sa Kanya kung tayo ay mayroong maayos na relasyon sa mga tagapanguna o tagapangasiwa ng ating simbahan. The author's 13 chapter exhortation to the believers is about to conclude na sa huling bahagi na ng book of Hebrews, although optimistic, he is unsure whether he will be able to fellowship with them again. And so to assure that the spiritual welfare of God's people would, would be taken care of, he admonishes the believers to turn to their leaders in their church. It is no wonder that the leaders were mentioned three times in this final chapter. So sa entire 12 chapters ng Hebrews, hindi nabigyan pansin ang 
ang kahalagahan ng mga leaders na until this final chapter, chapter 13. And I believe it is significant as far as the welfare of the church of God's people is concerned. Nakikita natin ang promises pinanggit sa chapter na ito, verse 7, look at your Bibles, verse 7, and sa verse natin ngayon, verse 17, and verse 24. Sabi sa verse 7, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Later, we will give emphasis to that verse. And secondly, the, our text main verse for this sermon. And thirdly, verse 24. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those who come from Italy send you greetings. So three times in these chapters, in this chapter, the leaders were given emphasis for the sake of the welfare of the church. What we can take from this observation is that it is important to build relationship with our leaders, those who guide us and care for us, for they are the ones whom God uses to bring us to faith, to faith in Christ and help us persevere in Christ. Again, it is very important and I believe it is crucial for us to build a good harmonious relationship with our leaders for they are the ones whom God uses to bring us to faith in Christ and to help us persevere in Christ. So now let us discover in light of this verse how God uses those who lead us to bring us to faith in Christ and help us persevere in Christ. Titignan muna natin paano mag ng Diyos sa mga leaders na ito para sa ating pananampalataya at pananatili sa Kanya. Then taking off from there, we will be motivated or inspired or enthused to foster a good, harmonious, and loving relationship with them. From that premise, kung paano ginagamit ni Lord ang mga leaders nito para sa ating buhay pananampalataya, ay nawa, mamotivate tayo na magkaroon ng maayos na relasyon sa kanila by obeying and submitting to them. We can see in this verse the job description of those who lead us to faith in Christ. What is that job description? Titignan po ninyo sa verse 17. Look at verse 17. What is that job description? I am not verse 17. Look at your Bibles, verse 17. What is that, that one job description for the leaders? To, to keep watch over our souls. To keep watch over our souls. It is good that the leaders of your church, of your CS, especially the pastors, are concerned with your mundane preoccupations, your physical needs, your emotional struggles, your financial problems, and so on and so forth. It is a good thing. However, their primary duty is the welfare of your souls. At least, as far as this verse is concerned. Your growth in the grace and knowledge of our Savior and Lord. Your growth in bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Your exercising or manifesting the characteristics of a kingdom citizen. This kind of welfare must be the primary duty of the church leaders. Although not exclusively, it is of great importance that those who lead us see to it that we are genuinely in Christ and are continuing in Christ. Minsan ang kadalasan sa simbahan, maraming mga kaabalahan sa pastor na maaaring maaaring umagaw ng kanyang atensyon at makalitaan ang kanyang pangunahing tungkuli that is pangalagaan ang ating spiritual life. Particularly to feeding us with the Word of God. It is of great importance, brothers and sisters. But how do they do that? Look at verse 7. 
At ito po namin ibigyan ng highlight ng verse 7 na nabanggit kanina. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of your way of life and imitate their faith. Again, the primary duty of the leaders of the church is to keep watch over the souls of God's people. And they can only do that with these three things. Three things that we need to consider on how the leaders watch over the souls of the people of God. First, they must be faithful to the word of God. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Probably the first time that they proclaimed to us or preached to us the gospel. Kaya kayo ay nakilala sa Panginoon. Nag-instrumento sila and through their faithfulness of preaching God's word, we have been saved. Secondly, they must reflect what it says in their life. Sabi po sa verse 7, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome. Consider the outcome of their way of life. So, first, they must be faithful to the word. Then, they must reflect what it says in their life. And thirdly, they must exhort the people to do just the same. So, exciting po ito, mga kapatid. Itong verse 7, kung dito lamang po mag-focus ang mga pastor at mga leaders ng simbahan na nagtilid in any Christian circles, ay safe po tayo at mapapangalagaan ang welfare ng mga anak ng Diyos. Being faithful to the Word of God, reflecting what it says in daily life, and exhorting the people of God to do just the same. It sounds familiar when we go to Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. Ezra had set his heart to devote himself to the law of the Lord, then to observe it, then to teach it to all Israel. So, itong tatlong bagay na ito, being faithful to the word of God, reflecting what he says in life, and exhorting to the people to do the same. It is very crucial, mga kapatid, that these three things must be consistently watched. And they, the key to unfailing to do it is to focus on Christ. Again, simply lang, primary duty to keep watch over the souls of God's people. Then these three things, be faithful to the word of God, reflect what it says, and exhorting the people to do just the same. At ang susi para mangyari ito, sabihin na natin routine na ito, is to focus on Christ. If you would jump to the next verse, from verse 7, jump to verse 8, ang sabi po dito, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Just focus on Christ and you will do your job. Well, all throughout the book of Hebrews, there's an exhortation to focus on Christ. Chapter 1, verse 2, in this life, last days, He, God, has spoken to us by His Son. Chapter 3, verse 1, therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus. And very popular verse, Hebrews 12, 2. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So itong mga verses na ito, ina-encourage tayo, especially ang ating mga leaders, to focus on Christ, so that we may do well with our job description, to keep watch over the souls of God's people. And as the leader watches the living word of God, that is Christ, he is being conformed to the likeness of him, and sin would be true with God's people. This is not a negotiable duty. 
Since the leaders will one day give an account before the holy and righteous God. Sa ating main verse, verse 17, Hebrews 13, 17. Kung ito tuloy po natin, sabi po ito, For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will give, who, who will have to give an account. Our leaders, pastors, elders of the church, will one day give an account to the Lord. Those who lead us shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ and ask if how faithful they did bring the people to faith in Christ and help them persevere in Christ. So it's, it's more on faithfulness rather than fruitfulness, mga kapatid. Ang commendation sa ating mga Panginoon, especially sa mga leaders, ay well done, good and faithful servant. Not good and fruitful servant. I am not necessarily negating one to the other. But if you would put your back behind the wall, kailangan niyo mamili. It's more on faithfulness. Ang tunay ng fruitfulness ay ang pagkakaroon ng faithfulness sa Panginoon at sa Kanyang Sinta. Again, those who lead us will one day appear before the presence of the Holy God and give an account on how well they did lead us. It is indeed a solemn task, a very serious and weighty task and that is why they were given by God to the church. Yan naman po ang isa yun ng Panginoon. Sa isang simbahan niya, local church, ay mayroong mga manang magtaya at mayroon siyang pinagkaloob bilang mga regalo na mga leaders upang pangasiwaan at ayusin ang simbahan. Ang trabaho ng mga leaders, pangunahan ng simbahan, trabaho ng mga members, ay sumunod. As simple as that, yung disenyo ng Panginoon for His Church. God gave us these leaders to care for us, especially the welfare of our souls. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians tells us that Christ gave the leaders, the office bearers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. To have a genuine faith in Christ and to continue to grow in that faith in Christ. So, lagi po ganoon. Basic po ang, ang job description ng mga leaders. And as long as we see those job description being fulfilled, being done, it is easier for us to follow them. But sa reality, is, it is not always the case. Kaya, magiging maghirap ang buhay now, hoping that these things are concisely but clearly explained, that the leaders who are called by God keep watch over our souls. Let's assume that this is consistently done by their faithful preaching and teaching of the word and by their faithful administration of the two sacraments, the Lord's Supper and Water Baptism. Then, we ought to support them obediently, submissively, and encouraging. This is somewhat complicated to preach. Medyo marami pong mga angulo na dapat tignan. At uh, hindi po basta-basta. Hindi po simplistic ang um, ganitong usapin. Especially in such a time as nowadays. Ano ba ang nangyayari sa panahon ngayon? One of the reasons why it is complicated to preach is because it is not inherent within us to unreservedly and unwavingly obey and submit to other persons. Hindi po natin nature walang itas na masunuri at walang itas na submissive sa kanilang nature. It is not inherent in us. We are more inclined to be self-dependent or independent and we find it uncomfortable to either Bow our heads or bend our knees. Also, 
what makes this even more difficult is uh, what makes it even more di difficult to obey is because authority has been misused and abused for so long. Kaya dumating tayo sa point na aking buhay na mahirap sa mundo at uh, magsabi, magpasahon, ay sapagkat may mga pagkatao na naabuso ang authority, yung posisyon, yung power, na misuse, perhaps mis misplaced kasi in the uh, first place. Kaya ito mahirap. And so here we are, nangingi tayo ng maraming dahilan bago tayo sumunod at magpasakot. Hindi na tayo basta-basta nag-obey o anong sasagmit dahil sa mga pangyayari nito. Even throughout the Bible, marami po mga leaders na sumablay. Kaya dumalabong lalo yung picture, yung ideal sa isang church na ang mga leaders ay maging responsable at maging madali para sa mga member na sito. Nevertheless, it doesn't diminish the truth of this text. And it says, Obey your leaders and submit to them. What does it mean to obey and submit to our leaders? Perhaps this is uh, self-explanatory, but if we consider the word obey, the word means to be persuaded, to be convinced, to be won over, to believe or to trust. So, hindi lang basta sumunod ka, kundi mayroong palaki na pagtitiwala na win ka ng iyong leader. Kaya ikaw ay susunod na titiwala ka sa kanya. And I believe the word trust or belief has a direct correlation with each other, with, with obey or obedience. Because you will not obey someone that you do not trust. So when we say we obey our leaders, it also means we trust them with their decisions, with their plan for the church, with their vision for us in the future. We trust them, that's why we obey them. On the other hand, the word submit means to yield to surrender, to cease to fight. Itigil ang paglaban o pag-oppose sa leader. That's what it means to submit. This word occurs only here in this verse. In Greek word ay upikete. Dito lamang po nag-exist sa verse na ito. It is different from the word used in wives' submission to their husbands as the church submits to Christ in Ephesians. Different word po. And it, it is the exact opposite of lording it over in 1 Peter. Lording it over which means using authority without humility, without giving an exemplary life, without the agenda of, or with the agenda of self-promotion. Ignoring the glory of Christ and forsaking the welfare of the church. So that's what it, what it means to lord it over. The exact opposite of submission. Supporting them obediently with full confidence in them, our leaders. Supporting them submissively and not picking a fight against them. Full-hearted, full submission. And we do that in an encouraging manner. As the verse tells us to let them do this with joy and not with groaning. If we will look at verse 17, yun po ang sinasabi sa last part ng verse 17, let the job description of the leaders be done with joy and not with groaning. Why? 
because that would be of no advantage to us. Pagpalagay na po natin ang mga, mga leaders natin, yung mga pastor natin sa Sumbara, or sabi natin yung supervisors sa CS, ginagawa pa nyo ng trabaho to keep watch over our souls, but in a painful, joylessly, and regretful manner. Yan ang buong picture, ipagpalagay natin ng Lord. Sooner or later, it will manifest in their ministry to the Church of Christ sa atin po. Makikita at makikita natin na wala na silang gana, wala na silang ligaya, hindi na sila inspired, although they know well that they need to do their job. But they feel pain, they feel sorrow, they regret that they answered the call of God to them. Sooner or later, it will manifest in their ministry to us. Eventually, they will stop and forsake our welfare. We do not want that to happen, ever. We want them to continue doing exactly what they are called by God to do, joyfully, satisfyingly, and excellently. Yun po ang gusto natin picture na inaalagaan nila tayo with joy in their hearts. Para na sa gayon, magkaroon man ang conflict, misunderstanding, eh, hindi basta-basta mag-quit ang mga leaders. Mananatili pa rin na inaalagaan tayo. It would be horrible to see that our leaders and ministers serve us with groaning. It surely is of no advantage to us. Definitely, it will bring destruction to our souls. And so, with all these things in mind, may we realize that it is very important to build relationship with our leaders. For they are the ones whom God uses to bring us to faith in Christ and help us persevere in Christ. Sila po ang pangalangin ng instrumento. You cannot say that we are alone in the island. The fact that it is God who called them to lead us means that we should trust in His providence that He truly uses them to help us grow and persevere in our faith in Him. Yung hindi natin pag-submit at pag-sunod sa mga leaders natin sa simbahan na inaalagaan tayo ay parang sinasabi na rin natin na ayaw natin ilalani ang pagiging sovereign ng Diyos at pagkilos niya sa ating buhay. Parang sinasabi natin, Lord, nagkamali ka naman ang leader na binigay sa akin. Again, uh, complicated po ang issue na ito sapagkat hindi naman laging idea yung nangyayari na faithful sa word si leader then nakikita sa buhay niya at consistent na in-encourage ang church na gawin ang kanyang ginagawa hindi laging ganoon ang senaryo hindi kayo paman we believe in the sovereignty of God in His sovereignty and His providence that He knows what is best for us Maaari yung mga disappointments or discouragements or sabihin na natin unmet expectations natin sa ating mga leaders. Maaari niloob yun ang Panginoon ang sa gayon ay ma-exercise natin yung Christ-likeness sa kanila. So, opportunity ito to be Christ-like towards our leaders. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, God has placed our leaders exactly where we are. So let us support those who lead us obediently, submissively, and encouragingly. Ang tanong ko para sa about sa amin ngayon, pagpakaroon ko talagang 
napakahirap sumunod sa leader dami ganito ang kanyang magaling and as a leader of the church he is disqualified sa qualification na binigay ng Panginoon at marami pang iba mga dahilan para masabi ninyo na kayo ay hindi susunod o hindi magsasubit sa leader ano yung maaari natin magpubutan ng motivation and encouragement upang patuloy pa rin ang sumunod kahit ang hirap sumunod magpasakot kahit sa tingin mo ay hindi na dapat I believe that the help comes only from the Lord maraming mga iba't ibang senaryo na pwede tayong ibigay upang sabihin natin that this is the point that I cannot the point in my life that I cannot submit to my people I cannot obey anymore yung mga ganyan ka specific na reasons ay maaaring may consider that's why it cannot be too simplistic it is a complicated thing but our Lord always helps us to do our duty ko ang duty ng mga leaders is to care for our souls our duty is to obey and submit to them in an encouraging manner how can we do that apart from the help of the Lord tanging ang tulong lamang ng Panginoon ang kailangan natin upang magawa yun where do we find that help I praise the Lord na mayroong benediction sa gunong bahagi ng Hebrews. Chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Dito tayo mungugot ng mga karanta ng pangdahilan upang magpatuloy sa pagsunod at magpapasakot sa ating mga leaders. Ano kong sabi sa benediction na ito? Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep. May the blood of the eternal covenant equip you with everything good that you may do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. First and foremost, katulad ng modern prayer na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon, our Father, kung saan meron tayong intimate relationship That Father is the God of peace. We have peace with Him because of Jesus Christ. And as a result, we can now have peace with one another. Especially with our leaders. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ did not remain in the grave. He is not dead. He is alive. Parang tulog ng ano, parang kanta. He is not dead. He is surely alive. Pero itong patutuhanan na ito, ang motivation natin, na lahat ng pagsunod natin sa ating mga leaders, na kanya namang inigay upang maging bilang regalo sa simpahan, ang ating pagsunod at pagpapasakot ay tunay na hindi masasayang. Because our Lord sees every obedience and submission that we do. Ultimately, those obedience and submission and encouragement and support that we have for our leaders is ultimately for Him. Para sa Panginoon niyo. He is the great shepherd of the sheep. And being the great shepherd of the sheep, maaari yung maging encouragement ito sa atin na huwag masyadong maging mataas ang tingin natin sa ating mga leaders. Minsan kasi, sa sobrang taas ang tingin natin sa ating mga leaders, pagka sila ay bumagsak, parang tatalito na tayo sa kanilang kalataya. Let us always remember na kahit sila po ay binigay na regalo ng yung leaders sa simbahan, Let us always remember that they are also sinners saved by grace. And it always 
in dire need of His mercy day by day. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only chief shepherd. Kahit yung mga under shepherds ay chief din ng Panginoon. Kaya, sa tayo na sila ay mag-faith, we can say to ourselves na katulad din, katulad po rin sila ng mga makasalanan at niligtas lamang sa biyaya ng Panginoon. That structure, specifically designed for his church, that is bought by his own blood. And as this benediction says, the blood of the eternal covenant. Yung covenant ng Diyos sama sa Diyos na naging produkto ay ang kanyang simbahan, tumanggap ng kalintasan pagkamat hindi ka rapat-rapat. I believe that it, this will be an added motivation for us to do God's will in the church by obeying and submitting to our leaders. Again, imperfect as they are. There is a promise of this benediction that God would equip us with everything good that we may do His will. He will equip us so that we may be able to obey and submit to our leaders. He will give us a heart that has a desire to encourage and support our leaders. And indeed, it is He Himself who works in us so that we will carry out what is pleasing in His sight. Through Jesus Christ, who alone deserves the glory forever and ever. So ang lahat po ng ito, mga kapatid, ay pagkilos ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. Maaaring marami sa atin na blessed dahil ang ating mga leaders ay talaga naman role model at napakadaling mag-obey at mag-submit sa kanila. Pero meron din namang mga ilang sa atin dito na naging struggle sa relationship nila with their leaders. Sana maging encouragement sa atin na ang Diyos ay kumikilo sa ating buhay. At siya mismo magbibigay ng puso para sa atin na mas magsabit pa at mas magpasakot pa sa ating mga leaders. At the end of the day, hindi para sa atin hindi para sa ating mga leaders, hindi para kanyo naman, hindi para sa atin, Panginoon Jesus. Sa kaluwalhatian ng kanyang pangalan, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Ay kung muna lang. Lord, thank you for your word. We cannot apply it apart from your word in our lives. So help us to become more and more obedient and submissive to our leaders. And as a safeguard, may you also enable our leaders to do their job description to do their task faithfully before you so that it would be easier for us to follow them. We all know and we acknowledge, Lord, that in the lives of our leaders, even in our lives, you are mightily working. And so we faithfully believe in our hearts that it would be possible for your church to have a good, harmonious relationship because you are working in the through our lives. Can Lord, apart from your work, apart from your divine power, from your grace and enabling mercy, we cannot do it. So help us, Lord. Help us. This is our prayer. 
with faith and humility. 